With 13 games on tonight's slate for MLB DFS, we have a whole lot of options, both at pitcher and at sacks. And our job is to decide which of those options have the ability to separate on a 13 game slate where we need to find upside, need to score as many points as possible. And I do think there is one pitcher who can separate and some stacks that are pretty good too, potentially two pitchers as well who can separate. So I feel like despite having a somewhat overwhelming number of options, I do still feel pretty good about being able to identify our optimal plays for tonight's slate. So let's dive on in and get you set for Friday's action. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Friday's 13 game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Unfortunately, similar to last night, there are some weather notes once again for today. Rain is very likely in Baltimore for the Orioles and the Pirates. It may move out as the game goes along, so depends on the timing of it, but it doesn't look great there by any means. Rain odds a bit lower in Philadelphia for the Phillies and the Nationals. Looks less rough than last night, but still worth noting. Last night also kind of annoying, but... We'll see how that one plays out there, timing of that and more, but I think that game a bit safer than the Baltimore one. There is a chance of rain mid-game between the Guardians and the Astros. They should be able to play, but it's looking like it's getting there right around first pitch, but hopefully just a, a late start and go from there, but we'll see about on that one. Rain odds decently high in New York for the Mets and the Braves. This one is similar to Pittsburgh, where I think it's legitimately at risk. So highest risk ones for today, Pittsburgh and New York. Uh, we've also got rain in Philadelphia and Cleveland. So check back on the weather situations for those once things are closer to lock later on today. We'll dive into the pitching preview for tonight's slate in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcast, we, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, whatever it may be, you can find us there. One quick programming note for us is that beginning next week, covering the spread, our betting podcast is shifting to being a daily show. So five times per week. And as a result of that, this show will no longer be going up on YouTube each and every day. So if you are watching YouTube, A, thank you. I appreciate it. You've been awesome support all year. Unfortunately, starting next week, we'll be shifting this podcast to being just audio. So to get that podcast, search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If that plan changes, I'll let you know. Uh, but as of now, I would not expect the show to continue to be on YouTube. So again, thank you. I appreciate all of you who have watched on YouTube this year. It's been a blast talking to you every time. But I would note that beginning next week, things will be changing in that regard. So just find the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. NFL Week 1 odds are out, and now is the time to try FanDuel Sportsbook if you haven't already. Get in on the action early this season. To help get you started, new FanDuel Sportsbook customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Think your favorite team is making the playoffs? Who is your dark horse to win the rushing title? Odds for that and more are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There is no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-979. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. 
Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. We got Dylan Cease up at the top of the pool. He comes in at $10,900, followed by Framber Valdez at 10-4. Nestor Cortez facing the Cardinals is 10000 Eric Lauer, 97. Sean Minaya is 95 with Jose Barrios in a revenge game, 94. Robbie Ray is also 94 with Taiwan Walker at 92. Tony Gonsolin is 91 with uh, Josiah Gray and Tyler Malley making his Twins debut both at $9,000. Ian Anderson, Corey Kluber, Patrick Sandoval and Dean Kramer are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now we got a lot of options for tonight, 26 different starting pitchers, but I do think one guy stands out. And that guy to me is Dylan Cease. He was my top guy here at $10,900. I don't think I have much choice, but to rank Cease first, he's facing the Rangers here. It's not really about that, um, but they also don't scare me off. 23% strikeout rate versus righties with a 7% walk rate. It's a fine matchup. This adoration is mostly about Cease himself. We're up to 10 starts now with that four seam, with fewer four seam fastballs and more sliders on Cease. And he has a 2.85 skill interactive ERA in that time. He's the only guy below three in terms of skill interactive ERA in each guy's most relevant sample. And his strikeout rate is 34%. That is six percentage points higher than everybody else in their most relevant sample. He does all that while also letting up a hard hit rate of just 31%. That's also best on the slate. So best Sierra, best strikeout rate, best hard hit rate. That's really tough to do. And that's all reflected in the results that Cease has had. He has an 062 ERA in the span. He has not let up multiple earned runs in any of these games. Granted, there have been seven unearned runs, but hey, they're unearned for a reason. I've got Cease projected for 7.6 strikeouts tonight, which is the largest on the slate by a decent amount. I think he's absolutely the top guy for tonight. I don't have a lot of pause in putting in there. So to me, Dylan Cease separates in the pack and is your number one starting pitcher on tonight's slate on FanDuel. I feel obliged to put Robbie Ray second, and I'm not opposed to that, even with a couple rough starts here recently. The past two for Ray have been awful. He's let up 10 earned runs in five and two-thirds innings, with four walks compared to just four strikeouts. But both those games were against Houston. His loss in the second game was fine. Uh, he was just facing the same super tough team in consecutive starts. So it's totally understandable that Ray would struggle in that situation. Doesn't worry me a whole lot moving forward. That's in part because the current Angels lineup is a rough one against lefties, just an 82 WRC plus on the current active roster with a 34% fly ball rate and a 117 ISO. That's not going to put a lot of fear in too many people. Ray is also at home, which does help. I think we can look at a larger sample on Ray. Digging into those two Astros starts, I don't think there was anything too concerning there outside of the results. But if we got 10 starts on Ray with his sinker being in the mix, and he has a 28% strikeout rate in that time, including those bad starts versus Houston, he has a 3.36 skill interactive ERA, his swing and strike rate is 13%. We did see this version of Ray facing the Angels one time with Mike Trout back on June 17th. And in that game, Ray went seven innings and had 10 strikeouts with one earned run allowed. I still think that Robbie Ray is in there. So I'm in on him for tonight. I'm going to rank him second behind Cease. He is projected for 6.9 strikeouts. That's second on the slate behind Cease as well. So I'll rank him there too. So to me, the top two guys and the guys with the best upside and maybe also potentially the best floor are going to be Dylan Cease and Robbie Ray because of the strikeout juice they bring to their respective matchups. Among the value plays, my favorite is on the other side of that game. That's Patrick Sandoval, 87. Obviously, if he's on the other side of this game, he means facing the Mariners. And they're a pretty tough team, but they're not as daunting of a matchup with no Julio Rodriguez. That's one thing that does help Sandoval. He also typically is a high strikeout pitcher. Now, I got a bit nervous about that part when I was looking at his pitch mix because in his past five starts, Sandoval's throwing more sinkers. And sinkers typically suck. I always want to avoid them. It worried me to see that usage on the increase. But the strikeout rate hasn't really gone down. Actually, it's up from his full season. It's 28%. And that's helped. Um, the sinker has helped bring his fly ball rate down to 25%. And that does come against some pretty tough competition with the Astros, Dodgers, and Braves all being in that span. So Sandoval did have bad results there. I think his ERA is around eight or six, somewhere in there. Big difference, obviously, but uh, not good either way. But 
So it's not all sunshine and daisies by any means. The peripherals are there, though. On the whole, Sandoval's had a decent year, 3.61 ERA, 4.03 skill interactive ERA. He has a path to double-digit strikeouts. I think that's enough to justify going in on him here. So Sandoval is my favorite value for tonight. I really do like Cease and Ray, so I might just build around those two. But if I were to go elsewhere, I'd probably look at least towards Sandoval, maybe from Valdez, depending on the time of the, the rain there in Cleveland. But Sandoval would be in that consideration for me for sure. So not a definitive to be out of my player pool as a top value of the night. So pitching pretty good between Ray and Cease. We got two guys who have a lot of upside and we can feel good about. Stacks are pretty good too. And that starts to me with the Brewers. They're facing Robert Duggar coming up tonight here for the Reds. He's replacing Tyler Malley in the Reds rotation. And it's a guy we can stack against with the Brewers here. Duggar has spent most of the year down in AAA. Wasn't a big strikeout guy down there. He had an 18% strikeout rate between his time with the Rays and the Reds in AAA with a 10% walk rate. And an 18% strikeout rate and a 10% walk rate are numbers we'd stack against if they were numbers a guy had put up in the big leagues. But this happened in AAA. We also did not see Duggar suppress fly balls. If you look at the starts since he joined the Reds organization, his fly ball rate is 48%. So all this adds up really well. We have seen Duggar in the majors previously, a couple outings with Seattle last year. He was with the Marlins before that. And if you look at his career in the big leagues, He's let up a 43% hard hit rate with a 40% fly ball rate. And I haven't seen a whole lot in the minors to suggest that those issues that he had previously have corrected themselves this year. So I think this all leads to the Brewers being arguably the top stack on tonight's slate. They are my top stack personally, and I think that they deserve to be there, not just because of the matchup, but also they're kind of sneaky fun from a power perspective. Hunter Renfro, Rowdy Telez, they're obvious guys, but Willie Adamas and Colton Wong both have ISOs above 200 against righties. Luis Arias just below that at 181. So they're a really fun team. I specifically want to keep using Colton Wong. I think that uh, the power speed combo, really fun. He fills second base, which typically is difficult for me. So I like Wong. I like the Brewers in general, and I think that they're a tiny bit underrated from a stacking perspective. This offense is kind of fun, and we should start giving, giving them more credit for being exactly that. The Rays are in play tonight for the second consecutive slate. I'm going to rank them second here for stacking behind the Brewers. They're facing Brian Garcia, and we saw Garcia last week in the majors, and he's coming back up for today. He's still getting stretched out as a starter. I've got him projected for 75 pitches for tonight, but the numbers here are concerning. Dan Zimborski zips over at Fangrass. His projection system projects Garcia for a 5.6 or uh, FIP as a starter in the majors. And that's in large part due to tough plate discipline numbers. He had a low strikeout rate and a high walk rate, and he's not a ground ball guy. He spent most of the year down in AAA. His fly ball right there is 40%. Now he goes to face big league batters. And Garcia held his own last week. He didn't implode. And that was a tough spot facing the Jays on the road. But he wasn't lights out either to the point where we need to be super concerned about stacking against him. I'm expecting some groin pains here because Garcia is both stretching out and transitioning to the big leagues. I think that's enough to justify stacking against him with the Rays. I think the Rays are good enough to take advantage of a plus situation. I'm curious what they do versus righties Isaac Paredes. Obviously, last night we did see him uh, batting third in that lineup. and But the problem is they've got a lot of guys. They've got more depth than they had previously versus righties, specifically with the addition of David Peralta. But Paredes has been so good this year. He has a 226 ISO versus righties specifically. So I hope that their plan last night is indicative of their plan going forward, where we get Paredes at a good spot in the order, even against righties, because I feel like he's earned that based on the way he's played so far this year. Salary there is $2,800. I think that is too low with how he has played. So uh, definitely an Amparetis uh, for tonight is being a key focal point within our DFS lineups. For the third stack, I'm going at another fresh face in the majors. That's Hunter Gaddis, who's making his MLB debut Facing the Astros, so welcome to the big leagues, kid. It's a rough assignment, but it's also a really tough task for him overall because Gaddis 
has spent most of this year in double A. He was there for, I believe, 15, 16 starts, somewhere around there. He just got promoted to triple A two starts ago. He's gotten strikeouts at both levels. So clearly moving from double A to triple A has not phased him. And it's, I don't think it's fluky either based on the swinging strike rates he's gotten at both those levels too. But the walks have been present and he lets up a ton of fly balls. The thing with fly ball pitchers, you can get by letting a fly ball. It's like Max Scherzer does if you limit base runners, suppress walks, get a lot of strikeouts. That way, if you let up a home run, it's not going to hurt as much. Probably a solo shot. Gaddis could struggle with that aspect of it. He's facing a lineup of just professional hitters, is the way I'd phrase the Astros to be. He may get a slight edge because there's no MLB tape on him, but this start was announced previously, so the Astros have time to prepare for him, and I think that that matters. I do believe that the unknowns here, coupled with Gaddis's strikeout rates, push the Astros down this list a bit, down to third, but it's not pushing them down far enough where I want to go with others above him. So the Astros, to me, grayed out as a very good stack here and one I feel fairly confident in, just below the other two teams we discussed previously. We get Trey Mancini here in an Astros uniform tonight, which is pretty fun. I already saw him go yard once, but the salary is $2,700. That's pretty low. We talked about this before with Dan Vogelbach, uh, Tyler Naquin on the Mets. Situation matters a lot for hitter because it increases plate appearances. It increases chances for runs scored and RBIs, all that stuff. And Mancini's situation, despite not being in an awful one previously, his situation did get better. He has a 38% fly bar rate this year versus righties. Good amount of hard contact. I think that when you're stacking the Astros, Mancini is a pretty quality piece to have within those stacks. Yuli Gurriel is probably going to bat higher in the order than Mancini, but I think I'd rather use Mancini among the secondary options. So Mancini, a big upgrade here with the Astros. Pretty fun batter, fun story as well. So I think that Trey Mancini, a guy worthy of our attention and someone I'd rank above Gurriel among the non Stud options. I mean, I didn't use a stud, but like among the non like super high salary guys within these Astros stacks. Let's go now to things to watch. The Yankees are just a hair behind the Astros for stacking for tonight. They're facing Dakota Hudson, which is part of why they're a bit lower. Hudson is annoying to stack against. He gets a lot of ground balls, but that's less true when he's facing righties than it is with lefties. Righties get more fly balls versus Hudson than lefties do. So I'm fine stacking the, the Yankees, uh, skewing towards the righties here to mitigate Hudson's ground ball rate. So Torres, Donaldson, Judge, et cetera, et cetera, those guys all grading out well after you account for Hudson's platoon splits and other issues. I'm not going to stack the Pirates tonight because they've been gutted uh, and also the rain potentially there, but I'm fine with some one-offs here if the rain winds up being okay. They're facing Dean Kramer. He's letting up a, a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact right now. That's a pretty tough combo to find on this slate beyond the top three stacks. So O'Neill Cruz, Brian Reynolds, both those guys very much in play, assuming the weather allows us to stack them for today. Finally, if you want to be a bit different tonight, I might check out the Cardinals for stacking. They're facing Nestor Cortez. Obviously, I don't want to stack against Nestor Cortez, but hasn't been as electric recently, letting up a lot of fly balls, getting fewer strikeouts. The Cardinals, we know, obliterate lefties. I don't think it's totally outrageous on a large slate to give yourself, to give them a sniff if you want to be a bit different. So it stinks to stack against Cortez because he was so nice to us earlier on this year and he's a fun pitcher. But I think in this one situation, I am okay. In tournaments where you want to get weird, putting the Cardinals on that list in terms of stacking for tonight. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today. And the boring one, not sure if he really counts as boring, but he had three barrels last night. Uh, that's Brandon Lau. Uh, three barrels is like a an absurd number. Four hard hit balls, I believe, for Lau across that entire game. So he's hitting the ball really well right now. And I find that super encouraging because I love Lau in general. He's a guy we've been infatuated with in the past. He actually has a barrel in four consecutive games. So six barrels in the past four games for Brandon Lau. He's seen the ball pretty well in a good spot. I will go with Brandon Lau as my boring home run pick for tonight. For the fun one, let's go back to Colton Wong again. Again, I know part of the appeal in him is that he is a power speed combination. And we're just talking about pure home runs here, but his ISO is 200. And that says to me, 
he can go deep. 37%, uh, 35% fly ball rate this year. It's actually higher versus righties too. Had a home run a couple nights ago. I don't think it's totally outrageous to look at Colton Wong in terms of home runs, given the matchup he's in, given the way he's hit the ball so far this year. I kind of like it. So our home run picks for tonight are going to be Brandon Lau and Colton Wong. Hopefully those two are fun enough to cleanse your palate for today. That's all we got here for the solo shot on this Friday. Again, a reminder that next week we'll be moving to just audio for this podcast over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. We'll have covering the spread up on YouTube in its place. So still a lot of good stuff on the FanDuel YouTube page, but just different stuff. We'll be talking MLB uh, betting on Monday, in fact. So if you've enjoyed DFS and want to dabble in some betting, we'll be talking about that on Monday up on the FanDuel YouTube page for covering the spread. But again, search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get this podcast plus NASCAR, UFC, PGA, and NFL not too far down the corner. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.